Well, Mr. Autry, what was it like growing up in Ackworth in the 1940s and 50s? Well, I was born in 1943 in Marietta at the old Marietta Hospital, which was about two blocks off of the Marietta Square. And came back to Ackworth with my parents and lived here uh, most of my life. But growing up in Ackworth was a great experience for me. Mm -hmm. I had a great childhood, even though we were not well-to-do people, but uh, I enjoyed it. I lived in a big house, which was right across the street from old Ackworth School. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where I went to school, mm -hmm. Ackworth School. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, Any of the teachers or the principals? I was one of the few people, I know you've heard of Miss uh, Fanny B. McClure. Absolutely. But I was one of the few people that did not have her in the first grade. Mm -hmm. I had uh, Miss Lorraine Day was mm -hmm. my first grade teacher. Uh -huh. And um, as I said, we lived across the street from the school and I remember this one incident that when I was in the first grade, we had recess and we were on what they call the flat, which is pretty much gone now due to construction of the new McCall mm -hmm. School. Mm -hmm. But we were on recess down there and I got separated from my class and I didn't see anybody I knew. So I looked around and looked around and just decided, well, I don't know anybody, I'm going home. So I walked across the street and mm -hmm. went home. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in the third grade, I had Miss Daisy Swanson. Mm -hmm. And she was a wonderful lady, a good teacher. And she employed the old corporal punishment on me one time. I got in a scuffle mm -hmm. with another guy who still lives here in Ackworth, good friend of mine. <laughs> And we got in a little scrap, and she paddled us both. And when I, when I got home that afternoon, my mother had already heard about it, and she gave me another little paddling. <laughs> so that was that was uh, normal for those days. Uh -huh. If you got it at school, you got it at home. That's true. <laughs> and your parents always knew about it. Once you got home, they had already heard. <laughs> Well, what happened when you went home by yourself that day? Your mother would meet you at the door, or well, no, she worked. I just oh. she was uh, she worked at the <clears throat> excuse me at the school cafeteria, oh, the lunchroom mm -hmm. as we just called it, the lunchroom. Mm -hmm. And so she was not there when I got home. I was home by myself for I don't remember a couple of hours maybe. So nobody locked the doors back then. Oh no, the doors were never locked. Mm. Um, and nobody missed you? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I don't remember the next day what what happened, but uh, I just know that I went home and stayed home the rest of that day. Mm. <laughs> what happened when your mother got home? She laughed and this, you know, I, as best I remember, she just laughed and said, you know, you, you can't just come home after school. You've got to stay until, I mean, before school's over, you've got to stay until the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I said, but I got lost. <laughs> so she just laughed about it. Mm -hmm. uh, was Mr. Hayes the principal when you were going to? Uh, no, no, that, he was a little after my time. Okay. Who was the principal? T.C. Cantrell oh, yeah. uh -huh. was the principal. Do you have any memories of him? I do. I remember Mr. Cantrell very well. He was a very strict man, and he uh, required a lot of discipline in his students, and which was good. That was uh, what most of us needed back then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. He went on to other things but after Ackworth, didn't he? He did some other things in the school system? I think he did. I, I can't remember <clears throat> for sure. But uh, he moved to, if I'm not mistaken, he moved to Gwinnett County oh, okay. and was in the school system down there. Uh -huh. So did you go, uh, let me see, uh, you, you would have started in 49, uh, 
And I assume you graduated in 61, so that would be North Cobb High School. But that yes, was. North Cobb High School opened in, I believe, 1959. That's right. Uh, <clears throat> so you went there two years? Three, three uh, the 10th, years. 11th, oh. and 12th grades. Okay, three years. So you graduated in 62? 61. 59. If my years are correct. Well, uh, 59, 60, 60, 61. I started in the fall of 59. Okay. No, Wait, that, right. that wouldn't be. <coughs> that no, like my years, years I'm, they're getting kind of fuzzy, I guess. No, I too. But I did graduate in 61. Uh -huh. How was that to open up a new school? It was exciting. We uh, combined Ackworth with Kennesaw, the, the, all the kids from Kennesaw, who used to go to Sprayberry, then they came to Ackworth. And we met a lot of new people, a lot of new kids. Uh, and it was just kind of exciting. The one good, one good thing for me, which holds true today, is that I started to school in the first grade at Ackworth, and I went through 12 grades with a lot of the same kids. A lot of the same guys that are still good friends of mine. We still stay in touch with some of them. And I just think that's a wonderful thing that's lost on today's children. Who, who were some of them? Well, uh, Merle McCoy, mm -hmm. Moose McCray, Jackie Van, Johnny Hembry. Uh, these were all first grade classmates mm -hmm. of mine. Uh, gosh, I, there were others. I just mm -hmm. I can't call their name right off the top yeah. of my head. What did y'all play ball together? Or? We did. We played. Where, where did you play? Where was the field? The, the field was across from my house. Called it was at, at Aquar School called the Flat. Oh, that's where everybody would gather. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we would go down there, and a group of guys would play baseball in the summer. Mm -hmm. Football in the fall and winter, uh -huh. and uh, it was just a great time. Uh, did you play in high school? Uh, yes, I did. I played football. Uh -huh. But when the schools, when the new school opened, we didn't have a baseball program. Mm -hmm. We had football and basketball, and I didn't play basketball, but I did play football. But at what position? Back then, we had the the old split T backfield, mm -hmm. and I played fullback right behind the quarterback. Uh -huh. Okay. Did you get to run the ball much, or were you mainly a blocker? Well, I ran the ball a lot, and all three of our backs ran in that mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. offense we had. All three of the backs got to run the ball, and on the plays you didn't run, you you were a blocker. Okay. So the quarterback basically made a choice who, who to hand off to? He called play in the huddle, and yeah. we'd run that play. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the controversy over building North Cobb High School and where it was going to be located? I really do not. Okay. Uh, I was, of course, I was in the eighth or ninth grade when all yeah. this was taking place, and uh, mm -hmm. I really do not remember. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, so, uh, uh, you would have been coming along about the, uh, you know, the time the lake opened up, Backworth Lake, yes. when you would have been about seven or eight years old. That is correct. Talk about that a little bit. Well, I remember my father used to take my brother and I down to Proctor Creek, mm -hmm. down there near the end of Seminole Drive, mm -hmm. and we would go swimming. And oh, and Proctor Creek before the lake opened up. Before the lake uh -huh. opened up, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, we had good times doing that. And then they, of course, built the dam and the lake backed up. Seminole Drive used to go clear across what, where the lake is now. It went clear across to the other side mm -hmm. and became... Uh, I can't remember the name of the road, mm -hmm. but anyway, it went straight across. And uh, when, the, when the lake was built, that changed. Of course, Seminole Drive dead ends now into the lake. Mm -hmm. And um, 
the beach was you know built and made and we used to go down to Ackworth Beach a lot and play there when I was real young uh -huh. they had a little miniature golf course putt putt golf uh -huh. down yeah. there mm -hmm. and a miniature train that would go around and around throughout the golf course uh -huh. and we rode on it and played putt putt and would go swimming at the beach mm -hmm. Swim out to a little raft they had out there, which was over my head, and my parents didn't like me doing it, but mm -hmm. I had to learn to swim. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had a good time at the beach. I, some summers I would work down there picking up Coca Cola bottles mm -hmm. off the beach. You were allowed then to take your drinks uh -huh. down, <clears throat> down on the beach, and I would work during the day picking the bottles up and putting them in cartons. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I was going to ask how it changed Ackworth to have the lake if you, of course you were pretty young at that time, but it, it had to bring a lot more visitors into the city. It did. There was a noticeable amount of traffic going by our old house then. It would come up, you know, that was the road down to the beach, the Dallas Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there was a lot more traffic. A lot of visitors, people from Marietta came, as well as other places, but mm -hmm. a lot of Marietta guys used to come. Uh -huh. Tell me about your mother and the scribe side of the family. Well, my mother was born in the Mars Hill community. She was one of six children. And my grandfather was a, basically a farmer, Grandfather Scroggs. Uh -huh. And they all went to the Mars Hill School, which the building is still standing. It's just been remodeled, mm -hmm. refurbished. Next to the cemetery? Next to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And that's where she went to school. Mm -hmm. And they went to Mars Hill Presbyterian Church, mm -hmm. which was the old... It had, the church was founded in 19... Excuse me, 1837. Mm -hmm. And so it was a real old church. Oh, yeah. And that's where they went to church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, can you talk a little bit about, um, you, you say your, your grandfather was basically a farmer. Does that mean he had other jobs too? He was a blacksmith. And he raised uh, some crops. And I think he was... He was also, uh, well, I think a blacksmith. Mm -hmm. That was his primary trade. Uh -huh. Yeah. Where did they do that? In, in, in the city of Ackworth? Or? No, in the Mars Hill community. Okay. okay. He, he had a shop there. Uh -huh. yeah. um, uh, any family tales on how long had the Scroggs been in Cobb County? I'm not sure. I don't know as much about the Scroggs side as I do the Autrys, but mm -hmm. they had lived there for many years. And uh, she did tell me this one story one time when she was a little girl, mm -hmm. a tornado took the roof off of their house. Mm -hmm. And I remember that very well, her telling me that. Oh, really? Yes, mm -hmm. when she was just a little girl. Wow, wow. Um, I guess then there are plenty of... Um, uh, people that had skills to put a roof back on. <clears throat> oh, yes. The uh, neighbors came and helped rebuild it. Is that the way it worked? That's the way it worked. Everybody pitched in? Every, yeah, all the neighbors pitched in and helped mm -hmm. rebuild the, the roof on their house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The house is no longer there. It's been replaced by a subdivision. Uh, okay. What's the subdivision? I'm not sure about the name of it. It's off of the Mars Hill Church Road. Uh-huh, right, right. A mile or two, maybe below Mars Hill Cemetery. Uh-huh, yeah, okay. Now, your father was a merchant. Um, talk about him a little bit and what he did. Okay, my father was the ninth out of ten children. Uh -huh. And all ten children were born in the same house, which is the house where I grew up there mm -hmm. in Ackworth. And he worked for his father when he was young in his father's store. Okay. And 
then when my grandfather passed away, my father and one of his brothers carried on the business for a long time. Where exactly was the store? It was across the railroad track uh, where the, not sure what they call it now, right there on Northside Drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it still standing? Some of the buildings, there's a group of buildings yeah, there. Uh -huh. And yes, the building the store is, is still there. The store is still there. Uh -huh. But it's empty now on that side of the street. It was, it com comprised two sides of the street. Where, if you can get this picture where Dallas Street comes into Main Street by Henry's mm -hmm. restaurant. Mm -hmm. The street went straight across the railroad track then. That's where the crossing was. Oh, yeah. And right on the other side. The depot was on the right. Uh -huh. There was a Western Auto store on the left. Uh -huh. And then right across the railroad tracks was where my father's and grandfather's store was. Uh -huh. What kind of things did they sell in the store? Oh, he sold everything from plows to feed, Clothes, work clothes, horseshoes, mm -hmm. uh, whatever you can imagine. It was a general mercantile store. Mm -hmm. uh, how long did it stay in business? Well, my grandfather came here to Ackworth in 1875 okay. and went into business with his uncle, Merrill Autry. Okay. And the store was opened by Merrill Autry, and it had been there since the early 1870s. Okay. Until 1939, when the Depression, or excuse me, 1929, uh -huh. was when the Depression came and right. uh, pretty much wiped everything out. But my, they carried on until 1943. Okay. But you, you were born? Yes, when my grandfather passed away. Oh, and now is that Orlando? Yes. Okay, so he died the year you were born. Correct. How about that? Uh, and uh, now how did the mill come about? He had this store and then he opened the mill? Uh, he had the mill at the same time of the store. Okay. It was, uh, my grandfather did. Yes, Orlando. Orlando. Mm -hmm. And he had the mill and the store. Okay. And was president of the Ackworth Cotton Manufacturing Company. Uh-huh. And had several business interests. Okay, so he's the one living in the house that you grew up in. That is and, correct. And did he build that house? Yes, he did. Okay. He yeah. built it in 1885. Okay. Uh, my grandmother's father, my great-grandfather, was Smith Lemon. Mm -hmm. And Smith Lemon and his brother, James Lyle Lemon, after the war, opened the Smith Lemon Banking Company mm -hmm. with money that they had hidden, gold. They had hidden gold uh -huh. in the back of the, their old house. You mean during the war? They during the war, yes. Gold? Uh, trying to hide it from the Yankees, which mm -hmm. they did. The mm -hmm. Yankees didn't find it. Mm -hmm. And when the war was over, they both survived the war, and they used this gold to rebuild their store and start the Smith Lemon Banking Company. Okay. Were they both in the war? Yes. Uh -huh. James Lyle Lemon uh -huh. was in several major battles and was captured in the Battle of Nashville oh. in, I believe, 1864 right. and so. remained a prisoner of war until the end of the war. Huh. And my great-grandfather... It wasn't that long at that point. Right. My great-grandfather, Smith Lemon, was a captain in the Quartermaster Corps hmm. and remained in... A, Georgia throughout the war, but was in service. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh, and then um, uh, Orlando, what did he do during the war? My grandfather. Yeah, your grandfather. What? Well, they lived in Carrollton at the time. He was 10 years old. Oh, 
During the war? During the war. Okay. And this is, to me, an interesting story. He told my father that when Sherman came through Atlanta, uh -huh. they could see the fires of the city of Atlanta burning. From he could Carrollton? see From where they, they came to the Fulton County city limit. Oh, to, to, and to see. could see the fires burning. Oh, wow. So let's say he was born like in 1855? 1855. Okay. He was 10 years old. Uh -huh. Wow. And they came, like I said, they came to the uh, city limits of, or to the Fulton County line and could uh -huh. see the burning yeah. of Atlanta. Right. Wow. Okay, so the Lemons um, uh, fought in the war and then... Uh, uh, let's see, did Orlando married a lemon, was that the way? He went? married the daughter of Smith Lemon. Okay. Her name was Isabel Lemon. Uh-huh. And they married in 1881, I believe. Okay. And the bank was in business at that time? The bank was in business then. And then it becomes Cobb Exchange later on, doesn't it? It goes through several It changes went through later. several changes. Uh, I don't remember the first change. It, I think it was Cobb Exchange Bank, but this was many years later. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, like the 60s the, or 70s or 80s. The first there. school in Ackworth was Smith Lemon Institute, which is where uh -huh. Ackworth School is. Well, McCall now. Uh -huh. Before that, it was Ackworth, and then before that, it was Smith Lemon Institute. Mm -hmm. And, and he started the school? He did. He did. He started the school and it was, you know, named for him. Uh-huh. Named for him? For Smith Lemon. Uh-huh. So he was a benefactor of the school or? Yes. He, was he directly involved with running the school? That I'm not sure of. Mm -hmm. Now there is another tidbit. Smith and James Lyle Lemon were charter members and helped found the Ackworth Presbyterian Church. Okay, okay. So um, th that's right, because uh, Ackworth Presbyterian is a mission church of Mars Hill. That is correct, mm -hmm. yes. So the Lemons started, or were involved in starting it. Starting the Ackworth Presbyterian Church. So did your family grow up in the Ackworth Presbyterian Church? Uh, most of the children did. My grandfather was a primitive Baptist. Okay. And if you're familiar with where Cedar Crest Road crosses 41, U.S. 41, uh -huh. the other side is Autry Church Road. Okay. That oh. was named for Orlando Autry. Okay. Now, which one, you say you, you had two grandfathers. Is it Orlando that's the primitive Baptist, or is it the women grandfather? The Orlando. Orlando is the primitive Baptist. <laughs> he was the primitive Baptist. Uh -huh. The lemons well, were Presbyterians. Huh. How did he become a primitive Baptist? Was that a uh, long family? I am connection? not real sure about that. Uh -huh. Okay. I, I really don't know. Oh, now, what was the name of your women grandmother? What was her first name? Belle. Belle, okay. It was Isabel, but she was known as Belle. Right, right. Did you ever get to, did you know her? No, or? she died in 1903. Oh my goodness. Right after the last child was born. Oh, oh my. Well, that's even before he started the mill. Now, I think that was 1905, wasn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, okay, so um, did you hear any family stories uh, when you were growing up about uh, Orlando and the mill or any other family stories? Nothing about the mill. That was kind of uh, before my time, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are stories about my grandfather. W one is I remember my an older cousin saying that they were home one night during the winter at the house, mm -hmm. and somebody was out in the yard stealing coal. They had, mm -hmm. they burned coal mm -hmm. for heat. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and she told him, she said, Grandpa, but someone's out stealing our coal. And he said, well, if they need it that bad, just let them have it. <laughs> and there is a story that when he worked for 
Smith Lemon uh -huh. store. Mm -hmm. Smith Lemon sent him on a horse up into Cherokee County to collect some debts. Uh -huh. And as he was riding his horse, it got dark and he was going to cross a bridge and the horse missed the bridge uh -huh. and he went into the river. Oh my. And he came out cold and wet and he went up to this house and asked the man if he could come in and get warm and spend the night. And the man said, yes. So he let him come in and gave him a change of clothes and he spent the night. And the next morning, grandfather said, how much do I owe you? And the man says, well, you don't owe me anything, but if you could spare a quarter for each of my children, it would help. <laughs> And the man had eight children. Oh, okay. So he gave each one of them a quarter uh -huh. and then went on his way. Okay. So, and then he collected the debts down the road? <laughs> there was no mention of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's a good story. Uh, so, uh, so your father ran the store until it closed down in, 40, uh, the store closed down when, 43? Was, no, no, he reopened. He stayed open. He, okay. That was his living okay, so until the early 50s. To the early 50s. And then he finally had to close the store because mm -hmm. uh, the competition from, you know, bigger stores mm -hmm. and so forth. And uh, he just closed the store and mm -hmm. what did he, do went to, he went to work for the city of Ackworth for a while. Oh, okay. Well, God, do you have any stories about the politics in Ackworth that uh, you'd like to talk about, or the government and how it worked? Well, my grandfather served three terms in the legislature, Georgia legislature. Oh, my goodness. Okay. He was elected in 29, in 31, in 33. Your grandfather, Autry. Correct. Okay. Orlando. Uh-huh. So, so and uh, he was a, a Democrat at that time. Well, who wasn't? Yes, who wasn't <laughs> in the South. Uh, so uh, there are no real stories that I can think of. Uh -huh. um, what did he think about, uh, it's, it's about that time that a Unique Mill comes and the Kenos come, and I know they got all kinds of breaks coming to Ackworth. Uh, did he have anything to do with that? Not to my knowledge. Okay. So he didn't see them as a competitor. Well, I guess he was out of the mill by that time, but for a long time anyway. Yes. Uh, he got out of the business, my grandfather did, in about 1939. His health began to fail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, when he was in the legislature, that was a pretty rough time for the whole country. That well, was it was. In. It was right in the midst of the Depression. Mm -hmm. And he had gone into debt himself trying to keep the business going mm -hmm. and had to sell off a lot of his land. He owned a good bit of land in Cobb, Cherokee, Paulden, and Lumpkin counties. Mm -hmm. yeah. As a matter of fact, at one time, he owned all of the land from where Acquar School is where Dallas Street turns there and goes down toward the beach mm -hmm. and Seminole Drive goes toward the beach. Mm -hmm. He owned all of the land back to where the lake is. Wow. Wow. But that was in the early days. Right, right, right. Uh, well, was he a Franklin Roosevelt supporter or a Gene Talmadge supporter? Oh, yes, supporter? very much Franklin Roosevelt. What do you think about Gene Talmadge? I never heard anything. Well, he never would say anything disparaging about anybody. Okay. And uh, neither would my father, and I, I wish I'd have followed in those footsteps. <laughs> okay. Uh, tell us about, uh, were they, was he involved at all with the local politics? I mean, in the city of Ackworth? Uh, not too much. Uh, he was, as I said, served in the state legislature. Mm -hmm. But as far as local, uh, he he was not much. Now, his brother, Bernard Autry, mm -hmm. was on the Cobb County Board of Education and also was the Cobb County School Superintendent for many years. Uh, what do you know about him? 
I just know that the Autry Middle School was named for him. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was a pallbearer at the funeral of Mary Fagan. Bernard Autry? He, yes. Huh. He was one of her pallbearers. Oh. And I don't know anything behind that story other than just that fact. Right, right. Hmm. Well, she was, uh, I guess the funeral was at, um, uh, that, I guess it was called Second Baptist at that time, but on Atlanta Street. And right. The very, in right 19 and 13, I believe. Right, that's correct. Wow. Hmm. Do you have, uh, from your own personal experience, uh, any um, uh, memories of any interaction between the white and black communities in Ackworth, or did y'all just go your separate ways? Yeah, where the store was, for instance, it was well, pretty close to the. When I was community. a young young kid, and my father had the store, Ackworth was still segregated pretty much, but a lot of black people traded with my father. Mm -hmm. they, that's where they bought their groceries. And I had good friends who, two boys who were the same age as my brother and I, and we used to play together over there down in the creek, which is just right behind us here. Mm -hmm. uh, we would go down there and play together. And what, What's the name of the creek? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. But it's right off of uh, it's right, Street? Or? Yes, it's it's right down here by Logan Farm. Okay, okay. And I really don't remember the name of it. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, but you played together. We played together. We would play in the creek and hide and run and ride bicycles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long did that last? Well, probably until my father closed the store. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. okay. Um, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about yourself and what you did after you got through high school? Well, after high school, I applied at Presbyterian College mm -hmm. in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to try and play football. So they accepted me into school. Uh -huh. And I walked on to the football team mm -hmm. and I played on what then they called the scout team. And at the end of my freshman year, I gave it up. I couldn't balance the academics and the mm -hmm. athletics, yeah, I guess. To do it all, it, it? It, it's I don't. I have admiration for guys now who can do that because mm -hmm. it, it, it's a hard life. Mm -hmm. But I went to school at Presbyterian College and I graduated. Uh -huh. And after graduation, I came back and I, at that time, this was 1965, mm -hmm. Vietnam was beginning to heat up. Right. So I enlisted in the Air Force Reserve. Uh -huh. and. And while I was in reserves, then I worked two or three jobs. I got a job at Lockheed. I went to work for them. And in 1968, my unit, my reserve unit, was called active duty. Uh -huh. I was working at Lockheed one day, and the next day I was in the Air Force. Okay. And so... Where did you go then? Where did you serve? It was all here in Georgia. I stayed at Dobbins Air Force Base. It was... Not tough duty at all. So you didn't have to leave home? No, I didn't. And uh, I, I served for two years in that capacity, and then I went back to Lockheed, and I was laid off at Lockheed, and I found this job through my wife's, some friends of my wife. I got a job with the Georgia Department of Revenue. Mm -hmm. And so... That's where I worked for the next 34 years until I retired in 2005. Okay. okay. Talk about your wife a little bit. Was she from Ackworth? She was, no, she was not. She was from Marietta. Okay. She was a Marietta girl. And uh, the interesting story there is that when I was working 
for Lockheed, she had a sister working there. And the sister gave me her phone number. So I called and set up a date and we started dating. And then my wife worked for the state. She worked for the state labor department. Well, it wasn't long after we were married, I was laid off from Lockheed and she quit the state to go, you know, to keep our first baby, mm -hmm. to stay on with the baby. Mm -hmm. And then she went to work for Lockheed. So it was kind of like we switched roles. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned your father was the ninth out of 10, I think, in his Right. How did he end up with the family home? Well, all of the others had already married and or or left home and had homes of their own. Uh -huh. So he was the only one. He well, he had an older sister who also lived there. They both lived there. Uh -huh. What was her name? Natalie. Uh -huh. And uh, that's an interesting question because I guess the others had all left home and had homes of their own, uh -huh. and he was still living there uh -huh. with uh, his wife, my mother. Uh -huh. And that's uh, how he became, I guess, sole owner of the home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what what happened to the house? Is it is it is it, is, is it still there? Oh no! It it was it was bought by an optometrist, Bill Sharpton, mm -hmm. who had plans of restoring it. It had become in terrible disrepair, mm -hmm. and then I think he decided it was too far gone. So he sold it to Cobb County Schools. Okay. And it is now a parking lot. Okay. That's too bad. Uh, but you've stayed in Ackworth uh, all your career? Or? Actually, I live in Marietta, but it's nearby. Oh, you live in Marietta? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've lived in Marietta for the last 40 so or so years. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, as you look at uh, Ackworth from a little bit of the outside now, how, how would you describe Ackworth today compared to Ackworth when you were growing up? Well, it has changed quite a bit. It has grown. So it, it was a small town when I grew up. You knew everybody. And as we said earlier, you didn't bother to lock your doors. Your parents didn't worry about you. They didn't worry about you being kidnapped or... Mm -hmm anything like that. Most they would worry about is me breaking my arm, which I did a couple of times. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but now it has just grown so that uh, in some ways to me, it's good, but in some ways to me, it's kind of sad to see all the changes. Mm -hmm. it, does, it doesn't seem to have that small town atmosphere anymore. Mm -hmm. But there again, I don't live here. I just visit. Right, right. Well, Marietta's grown quite a bit. Marietta has grown a great deal. So, yeah. Well, I'm about out of questions. Is there anything that uh, we should have talked about that we haven't that you'd like to add to the interview? Well, I can't really think of anything. Um... I, I, I can't have anything I'd like to add. No, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. I've enjoyed it.